What's going on, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurs? This is Shay Vines, founder and chief fire igniter of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. And we have, over the last couple of weeks, been talking about some of the most common objections and questions that I receive concerning the message in this book, Grace Over Grind, how grace will take your business where grinding can't. So here's the thing. This is a common, I've heard this more than once, different flavors and different varieties of this, which is, Shay, it really sounds like what you're doing is you're advocating sitting around, you know, waiting on the Lord when he's waiting on us to do the work. You know, we're supposed to work hard. And the concern is that by talking about grace over grind that I'm advocating sitting around doing nothing and waiting for business to thrive while you do nothing. Now I'll first say, and not to be a smart aleck, but most times when I hear this, my response to that person is, have you read the book Grace Over Grind yet? And most of the times the answer is no. <laughs> they haven't read it, they haven't heard a message, all they did was get triggered by me saying Grace Over Grind. So that's, that's real talk. But when we talk about grace, over grind, we're talking about working, operative word, working by the power, the infinite power, by the way, of God's grace, instead of relying primarily on our own grind, working in our own strength. So we're not talking about sitting around doing nothing, although sometimes the Lord may call you to sit around and do nothing for a second. Just saying, it's happened. Talk to some of my igniters, mentors, talk to some of my team members. There's been times when the Holy Spirit's like, sit down, sit down for a week, sit down for 30 days. I got to tell you, one of our team members, one of my mentees and one of our team members, Latara Venice, there was a point in time where the Holy Spirit said to her, sit down for, I think it was 40 days. She had to sit her business down for 40 days. And I will tell you, after those 40 days, and that was just her spending time with the Lord, just spending time in his presence, just every day, what are we doing today? and really cultivating greater intimacy with him. And I will tell you, she has not been the same a day since those days were over. That was like a few a few years ago now. But the change that has taken place in her life and in her business, the abundance that has shown up in her life and in her business as a result of her really embracing this idea of working by the power of God's grace. And if, and if part of that means that he says, sit down for a week, sit down for a day, sit down for whatever, so be it. He knows. He knows what, what you need, and he's never trying to take anything from you. He's always trying to get something to you, okay? So anyway, that was just a side note rant. But the idea here is working by the infinite power of his grace. There was this, um, I don't think I talked about this in, the, in one of our previous videos, but I talk about it often, and it was the scripture that completely changed everything for me. And it was in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, in the message translation. And it says, and this was Jesus talking, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I'll never lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. And this is the same scripture that you might be most familiar with where he talks about, um, about how his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Okay. That's, that's the message translation of that particular scripture. Um, and when I heard that, this was years ago, but when I heard that it changed everything for me, because when I heard it, that was an invitation to work differently. Wow. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. That sounds amazing. Like, what is that? And I want it. I want to learn the unforced rhythms of your grace. I want to learn how to work with you and walk with you and watch how you do it. I, I, want, to, I want to do that. And so that began, the, that was like the beginning of a shift for me of learning what it looks like to work, work y'all, work <laughs> in the infinite power of his grace. So for anyone who thinks that grace over grind is about not doing any work, you for sure need to read this book, grace over grind. I believe every, I believe every entrepreneur should read this book. 
I really do. But if you think that that's what it's about, then you're missing out. And I believe that going back to what I shared last week is that I just truly believe that this grind thing is a stronghold and it's so crazy that it's like as soon as something comes up to talk about God's grace or something that's better, something that's more powerful, something that you know includes him and his infinite everything, and we get bent out of shape and think, oh, that's just, oh, that's just an excuse to just sit around and do nothing. If you're saying that, if that's what's going on in your head, then tell what that voice in your head to be quiet, to shut up, whatever you want to do, and pick up a copy of this book and read it. Because I don't want you to miss out on God's best working by the infinite power of his grace. Because when you do that, what are, I mean, there's so many benefits, right? Not just the rest that you heard about when I went through Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Working in his rest all by itself, that's amazing, right? All by itself. But you also, when you are working in his rest and at the rhythms of his grace, that also is looking like everything's coming out of a place of intimacy with him. So wisdom, strategy, insight, all these things that are not going to become, that are not natural to you, they're supernatural. It's insights away above and beyond what you would be able to do naturally. One of the stories I shared actually in the book was one of my friends, Jamie Cross, and it's so funny because she failed chemistry in high school, and yet here the Lord gave her a vision of a business that required a whole lot of understanding of chemistry, and she's thinking, you know, I, I failed. I failed chemistry. I'm not even good at chemistry. But do you know because of his super, now she could have just said, hey, this is nothing. I have no wisdom here. I've got, you know, I've got nothing here. But because of her intimacy with him and her trust and saying, you know what, this is what he showed me. I'm going to take a step. Do you know that as she went to do the work, to read the books, to understand the chemistry she needed to know, it was his supernatural power that helped her to understand. He gave her eyes to see and a mind to understand stuff that she did not understand before. I've got stories like that for days. Right. So there's so many things that we have access to when we work by the power of his grace. That's just I mean, that's a small thing, but a huge thing. By the way, that business has gone on to be a seven figure and growing and with no <laughs> signs of stopping business. All based off of what, by the way, something he gave to her in a dream. He gave it to her in a dream. She was getting sweet sleep, not staying up all night but ask God to give her an idea. And he gave it to her in her sleep because he gives blessings in our sleep. I was talking to a real estate investor just yesterday. And now I always think it's cool when I have conversations with people who have tons of experience in their field, because when you have tons of experience in your field, it's very easy to lean upon all the natural wisdom and expertise and insight that you have because you have kind of grown up in it. Like you've had lots of experience now. And I was talking to him and I asked him about, you know, when have you ever had a situation where your natural wisdom for real estate investing, because you've been doing this for 30, 30 some odd years that the Lord led you and a Holy Spirit, like gave you insight or gave you a direction or something that just made no sense to you. And you said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pay attention to what the Lord said on this thing, even though this is contrary to my expertise and my wisdom and my experience for 30 years in this industry. And he said that happens so many times. In fact, he had a deal where he went through with a deal. He's like, I didn't talk to God about it. I was just doing my deals, doing my thing, operating out of the, the wisdom and the knowledge I have about what's a good deal and what's not. And he went and he did the deal. And then when he talked to God about it, after he signed the papers to do the deal, you want to know what Holy Spirit said to him? What are you talking about? We, this wasn't a we, that's all you. And do you know that he got rid of that deal so fast? Like he's like, I, I could not have moved faster to unload what I just did, undo what I just did because I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to do any deal that God's like, oh, that's on you. That's on you. I want to be where his favor is. He wanted his deals to be like the other deals where it's like he did those things with insight from God and he's seen those things thrive. You know, insight from God would have him buy a property that doesn't make sense in an area that might not make sense based off of his knowledge, his understanding, the history of the area, but yet make that investment because God said.
right? There's so many stories like this. This is the power of operating, working by the power of his grace. And sometimes that working will mean not working. Sometimes waiting on the Lord is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So I don't even want to act like that's not even part of it because it is. Sometimes you just need to be quiet. Sometimes you need to just sit down somewhere. Sometimes you do need to wait. Sometimes it's the grind that has us saying, hey, well, you know, I need to make this thing happen. I need to push through this door. You know, God put, because the opportunity is presented in front of me, it must be God. No, no, just because something comes in front of you doesn't mean that it's God. Oh, this must be the favor of God. This showed up. And then we go and we rush into things that we had no business doing when we could have just been still for a moment and asked God, is this for me? And is this for now? And waited upon the Lord for a response that's coming from the creator of the universe. <laughs> so who wants to miss out on that? Who wants to miss out on that? If your desire is to make everything happen in your own strength, just know that whatever you grind to create for yourself, you also have to maintain it on your own. That's why that real estate investor I was talking to got rid of that property because he says, ain't no way that I want to be responsible for, for, for the success of this thing. I don't want to have to have the burden of this particular property. If the Lord says I'm not in it, I don't want it. And that's the right mindset to have. If you're not in this, I don't want anything to do with it. And how do you know if he's in it without intimacy with him? without working in his rest, without exalting his presence in your business. How would you know if you don't have a relationship with him like that? You know? So I just want to share that sometimes it does mean waiting. And sometimes it means waiting when waiting doesn't make sense to you. And sometimes it does also mean sitting around and doing nothing for a, a little bit of time, but you're doing nothing that you think is doing nothing is actually doing something. It's doing what God said to do. It's being obedient. So you actually are doing something because that's how the Lord directed. So by no means is the idea of grace over grind about, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to sit here. That's it. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait for something to fall from the sky. No, that's not what it's about at all. But I will tell you that because of the favor of God and when you're aligned with him and when you have intimacy with him and you are being led and empowered by him, divine favor often can look like something fell from the sky. Sometimes it looks that way, but you were in position and you were prepared and you were doing the things, right? You were doing it with him and not running and just doing things all in your own strength and trying to make things all happen on your own. So that's all. I'm going to go into the comments and see if there's any questions. Let's see. Jenny. Hey, Jenny. She said it all starts with rest. Yes. Krista says she wants all the supernatural power. That's me too. I want all of it. I want all the supernatural power. Why would we not want his best? Why? It makes no sense to not want his best. That makes no sense. So we just make the decision that I want to experience your best and I want to have a greater kingdom impact in the marketplace and he will walk you through that, but you're not going to be able to do it on your own. Let's see. Are there any questions? I'm still going through here. Let's see. God loves when we operate in his time and not our own, on our own. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to have a chat about that at some point, talking about Kronos time versus Kairos time and how those things come together and eternal moments and natural. I mean, there's a whole thing we could talk about around that. And all of that is also part of working in his grace, in his timing, not feeling the need to elevate yourself, but just continue doing the thing that God's placed in front of you to do and allowing him to be the one who promotes. Because again, just like I said, the thing you grind, grind to create is the same thing you've got to maintain yourself. And by the way, that has to do with relationships too. I just shared on Facebook the other day how even when it comes to kingdom collaboration, nah, honey, I'm not looking to grind in that. I, I, I can't force that. You can't force relationship. You can't force connectiveness. You can't force doing things together. If you're having to force it to try to, for, for it to happen, on your side, you've got to just try to force everything and try to, you know, try to orchestrate everything and try to make everything work. No need to grind for a relationship. No need to do that. 
And it's crazy. By the way, you got to maintain that yourself too. Let's see. Any questions before I hop off? Uh, again, if you have not read this book, Grace Over Grind, How Grace Will Take Your Business Where Grinding Can't, you can get a copy of it at graceovergrind.com. That'll send it over, to, uh, send you over to the website exactly where it is. It's available in hard copy and paperback, and which is the one I recommend, by the way, because it has a bonus journal. And audio, Kindle, anything you want. All right, let's see. Okay, Kristen, I see your question. You're asking, is there anything you should be doing? <laughs> okay, so Kristen has joined our Igniter's Mentoring Program, which, by the way, quick plug for that, our next round of Igniter's starts on July 1st. And Angie, help me out, because I don't know the date, the final date for registration. I want to say it's June 23rd. But if you can help me out, let me know if that's it. But our Igniter's Mentoring Program, I believe there's around 15 seats left. And I highly encourage you, if you want to have not just mentorship around walking this thing out because it's so countercultural. So if you don't have people around you, you know, doing this thing, you just might want to get connected with the community of people who are and get the mentorship to just kind of help you with where you are right now and where God wants to take you next. Okay. If you want information about the Igniter's mentoring program, just go to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash mentoring. And Kristen, to answer your question, no, you don't need to do a thing. So just uh, wait for your materials and just stay plugged in to what's going on. And there's nothing that you have to do um, before we get started. But you will be getting an email from our trustee COO, Angie, uh, before you get started with just some, you know, just some pre stuff that you'll need to know um, and getting you all connected to all the things you need to get connected to. But that's it. Any other questions for me while I'm here? Oh, wow. Oh, hold on. There's a whole lot of other stuff that showed up. Uh, let's see, how do you handle rest when you feel as though you are going backward? Okay, so part of the, the part of the problem with trying to answer this question is that I don't know if we were, when we say rest, if we're talking about the same thing. So I've got to kind of put some parameters around here to answer this question effectively. Because you might say rest is doing nothing or rest might be sleeping or whatever. When I talk about rest, what I'm talking about is an active awareness of the presence of God. That's when, when we talk about working in rest, it's an active awareness of the presence of God in your business. Okay. Now, of course there's physical rest as well. There's all types of rest. So now to get to the question, how do you handle rest when you feel it? First of all, you don't have to handle rest. Like rest just is like you learn to walk with him and flow with him and maintain an active awareness of his presence and, and just like, and how you flow. Okay. Cause that means that you're remaining sensitive to how he leads, how he guides all of those good things. It's that's really cultivating, cultivating intimacy. So you don't have to handle rest. But now to go to the question where you said, if you feel like you're going backward. Okay. So that's not an uncommon feeling, especially for someone who says that, you know, someone who's making a shift and saying, okay, I want to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur. Like I want to be motivated and propelled forward by the kingdom of God. I want to seek first kingdom of God and his righteousness, and that's how I want to operate in business. It is not uncommon for someone who is making that shift to feel like they may be moving backward. And the reason why they feel that way is because when you were operating in your own strength and pressing forward and grinding, you had all this forward momentum that you created for yourself, and now you're taking a step back and saying, hold on, I want to cultivate intimacy with God. I want to talk to God about my business. I want to hear what he has to say. I want to talk to him about my plans and submit them to him. So it can oftentimes feel like you're moving backward. And sometimes you might be in the natural, but supernaturally, you're actually prepare, preparing yourself to go way further and faster and experience acceleration because you're getting in position. You're getting your mindset right? And you're getting your heart posture right towards him. And so it's not uncommon to feel that way at all. It's not. And it's not uncommon for certain aspects of what you're doing for those things to stop or for your plans on something to slow down because before you were pushing. Okay. And now you're like, wait, should I push here or should I not? Very, very common, especially when you're just starting to make a shift. 
in your thinking. I hope you've been enjoying these messages on the most commonly asked questions and objections to the Grace Over Grind message. Again, if you have not read this book yet, I highly encourage you to do so. You can get it at graceovergrind.com. And also, if you'd like to participate live in these broadcasts, you can head over to Facebook and join our page there, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, and connect with us as we go live there. So have a wonderful day. Take care and God bless.